Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to North Hobart Oval for this STJFL grand final between the North Hobart Demons, who you can see running out onto the hallowed turf of North Hobart Oval, and of course, the Clarence Ruse. My name is Tubes Taylor, and it is a pleasure to be bringing you this game to you live across the nation here on Duff TV. I'm joined in the commentary box by North Hobart champion and coach and legend, Chris Ransom. Good morning, Chris. Hey, Tubes. Thanks for having me. Great to have you here, mate. What a treat. And we're in for a real battle between these two traditional rivals, you might say, Chris, between North Hobart and Clarence. Clarence ended up on top of the ladder all season, undefeated. Uh, and second on the ladder were the North Hobart guys. You're obviously close with the North Hobart boys. How have you seen their preparation? Uh, yeah, I think they had a pretty good win last week. Um, they watched, watched these two teams play here uh, two weeks ago on the Friday night before the seniors, and it was a cracking contest. Um, Clarence just getting up over the top in the second half, but um, yeah, it should be an absolute ripper today. Yep, very excited to see that. That is, of course, you're talking of the second semi-final here a couple of two Friday nights ago, and Clarence got over the top pretty easily in the end by um, a fair margin with Williamson, Ethan Williamson from Clarence. He's one to keep an eye out for. He kicked four goals, the number 22. Uh, but They've been pretty close all season. The first round, for round four they first met, uh, was Clarence by quite a margin again. But in round 13, it was just the three points separating the two sides. You can see the Clarence side on screen there. Players to watch out for here, Maxi Gapen, Josh Creswell, Ethan Williamson, Darcy Noonan is an absolute star, Fletcher Richards and, of course, Charles Leeson. They're coached by Matt Gapen, the cat, former North Hobart champion, uh, but current Clarence coach. Now, North Hobart, mate, the players to watch out for here. Any any ideas? Uh, Harry McLeod won the Beakley for this age group. So him, uh, Angus Angus Cracknell, Harry Caswell, um, younger brother of Sam Caswell, the plays seniors for North Hobart. Um, and obviously Charlie Hasty and Nathaniel Salzberger have played a bit of state footy down to 12s last year. So um, definitely a few to watch out for there. So the Beakley medalist, Harrison McLeod, you're going to be keeping a close eye on him. Yeah, he um, plays through the ruck. Um, very, very athletic, um, multi-sport athlete. So, yeah, just one, one to watch out for. Good pace, good, good height. Uh, just don't, don't those blokes annoy you? These multi-sport oh, athletes. Just, just very annoying. I know I struggled to even get a kick in under 13s, let alone play multiple sports. But there you can see on screen the North Hobart Chargers getting close for their little handball drill. There's the man in the stack hat. Uh, Eden Hills. What do you reckon about stack hat wearers? They're pretty good, aren't they? Oh, I like no, them. Don't mind them. It makes you stand out a bit. That's I'm exactly prefer right. Prefer them over man buns. I'll give you the tip. Yep. Now, your season, you're the coach of the... Uh, under 14s. Under yeah, I coach the under 14 North Hobart girls. Yep. Um, we finished up, got knocked out in the first week of finals, unfortunately, but um, was lucky enough to be able to jump on board with Dad with the under 16 girls last week and um, got over the line over Sandy Bay. So that was very nice. A very good game of footy last it week, was. wasn't it, mate? And your sister plays in that team? Yes, she does. Um, Claire played a, played a very, very good game last week. Um, yeah, it was a very good all-round team effort, though, I thought, from the North Hobart girls. Absolutely, and I'm really enjoying watching the girls' footy here. It's an evolution almost because they haven't been able to play for uh, for decades, and now all of a sudden you can see them coming up, and they're, they're crazy. Those oh, girls. Oh yeah, they're, some of them are. <laughs> some of them are not, Some of them are very crazy. But yeah, you can just see they're getting three, even four years of footy under their belt now, and they're just starting to excel in their skills and the brand of footy. Uh, played between Sandy Bay and North Hobart last week and the 14s between Kingborough and Claremont was just good brand of footy to watch. Yeah, it was really great to watch as we see the Clarence boys coming up on screen. They are, of course, sponsored today by Coal River Farm. That's a good... Have you ever been out there? Oh, I haven't, tip, actually. Oh, mate, it's tip-top. Parmic, uh, the fire protection statewide group. Tire right, go and get all your tyres from Tire right and Dire Grind for all your concrete grinding needs. Go and see Dire Grind. As the man from the STJFL just does his best to talk over the top of us. What's your tip for today's game there, Chris? Oh, I reckon it's going to be a close one, but I think just the skills of Clarence might... Obviously, I'm North Hobart, so I'm going to want them to get close, but I think Clarence just might be a bit too good today. I'm tipping Clarence in a close one. A little bit classy. Yeah. There's obviously been a few games of footy played here at North Hobart in the last few weeks. Three games here yesterday in the SFL. I think it was four games, actually, was with, it? The, oh, with the, women's the women's as well. As well. Yeah. yeah, four games of footy. Gee. So after today, I imagine that North Hobart might be a bit like a paddock. So yes. here we go as we line up for the National Anthem.
I've never experienced that, Chris. Have you ever had the feeling of the national anthem before a grand final? Uh, only once, mate, and uh, it's very, very special. <laughs> All right. Who did you play in that grand final? Uh, Clarence. It was a North Hobart Clarence oh, grand final as well. Jeepers, creepers. All right. So here we go. The boys coming in to their coach there, of course, Brad Hasty, just revving the boys up one last time. Getting them nice and close, and I imagine their nerves are on end, as the boys from Clarence would be as well. But anything can happen on grand final day, can't it, Chris? Yeah, anything can happen, and um, it's obviously the team that settles settles early has probably got a long way to winning the game, but um, both of these teams are pretty experienced having been here last year, I think, and played each other, so... Yep, well, we'll see what happens as we see the boys from Clarence there just getting their last instructions from coach, the cat, Matty Gapen. There's a bloke that could stand on heads, Matty uh, Gapen. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, looking, looking through the team sheets and um, some of the names on the Clarence sheet have sort of... Names from yesteryear that you sort of that I grew up idolising a bit, playing, watching them play for the Devils. And yeah, absolutely. Oh, Setchell, Gapen. Cooney, Richards, Noonan. There's a, there's, a, me. there's a few there that are just could. Their dads are very, very good players. Very handy footballers. But they're up against it with the Demons, who have no doubt come to play. Very interesting start. One man that I'd, I'm keeping a close eye on today is Darcy Noonan. That boy is something special when he gets going. It's just a matter of whether he can get it going on Grand Fort. Excuse me, grand final day. And what did you think of the haircuts of the umpires today, Chris? Uh, they could probably use a trim or two, I reckon. <laughs> All right. So it is STJFL under-13's grand final for 2019 between the Clarence Roos and the North Hobart Demons about to get underway as we just wait for the goal umpires to check their posts, make sure they're all good. We're all good. They should have done this earlier. Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Al down in the uh, Letitia Street end. He's umpired a lot of lot of footy. Yes, Al's umpired a fair few of my games coming through. So. so here we go, about to get underway here at North Hobart Oval. Clarence and North Hobart in the grand final. Ruck contest, one down by Noonan. It came out to the ruse and Noonan goes again. Kicked out towards the wing here now. Clarence get the first hands on the footy. Noonan again. I've got his hands busy early. Quick kick down to the half forward line out of bounds in front of Lee Song. How are nerves before the game here, Chris, for these young fellas? Uh, you'd imagine they'd be pretty nervous, but I reckon it's an excited it's an excitement nervousness rather than a nervous nervous to, to being too nervous, sorry. Yep. Um just up and about, ready to go, I reckon. Hard over the footy as he's got his hands on it. It was actually Blake Harper there who went again, got his quick kick forward, looking towards Maxi Gapen, but the ball beats him over the line and in front of the captain for the Demons, Hasty. Boundary throw in just inside forward 50. Nice throw in from the boundary umpire. That was great. Quick kick forward by Creswell. Demons just can't get their hands on the footy. Out it comes now for Gapen. Gapen gets his handball away just out towards Johnston. Quick kick forward again by Creswell. Bouncing ball inside forward 50. Dangerous here for the Ds as they clear it off the ground. Quick kick. Leading the race out there is Caswell. Nice kick off the ground beautifully by the number 17 who I haven't got here as that one goes forward again. Now here's a chance for Noonan. Noonan spins out of trouble onto his right boot but his kick goes untoward. Out towards his mate there, Cracknell, from the opposing side. Again, the ball moves inside forward 50, spending a lot of time inside forward 50 for the Roos. As that one's thrown away, nice tackle. It'll be a free kick to Cracknell. Yeah, a lovely tackle from Cracknell there. Clarence have just had a lot of the footy, setting up really well outside 50, so just very hard for the Ds to get outside, and um, hopefully they can get it over the top here. And but Clarence look like they've got it back inside, getting it back inside 50 once again. Yep, it goes through Creswell. Clever touch there by the Ds player just to keep it out of reach of his Roos opponent. Spinning. Quick one by the D's, just clears the area momentarily. Looks like it's coming back though. Clever tap on there, nicely. Over the foot is Setchell. Setchell gets buried and the umpire says, no, I'll take it and ball it up. He hasn't even got a headband on this umpire. Don't know how he's going to proceed to make decisions, but we'll, we'll let him go and see how he goes today. <laughs> that's good, that's good. Quick kick forward nicely by Fox. That one's out of bounds on the full though. And it'll be a free kick going to the Roos. 
Hurd will take the kick. Hurd has it at centre wing, just in front of the George Miller stand. Quick kick forward, nice mark taken by Harper. So the captain for the Ruse tells his charges to spread. His kick goes long, deep inside forward 50. Now bouncing ball over the back. Oh, pressure here. Quick kick off the ground. Goal. Johnson gets his first and the first of the game. Yeah, always dangerous when that ball gets over the back for defenders. You try not to let it happen, but lovely kick in by Harper and just uh, real red off the pack by, uh, was it Johnston? Yeah, Johnston. Yeah, yeah, really well red off the pack. And he can do that to you, Riley Johnson. I've called his name a few times over the years, and we'll see his positioning right here. He just runs, but then uses his pace to get to the goal side of the footy. And instinctive kick off the ground, and a nice little celebration as the Clarence boys all rally around him. Yeah, up, up and about early. That'll be a real nerve seller, I reckon, for the Clarence boys. There's James Reynolds on screen, the Ruckman for the Roos. Punched away by Noonan. The handball came back. Quick one out towards Creswell. His kick goes forward. Noonan just tries to scoop the ball up. Can't quite. No real clean possession as yet as this one comes out for Gapen. His kick goes in the Johnson direction. Johnson's going to have two in a minute if he can get this one on the boot. And unfortunately, he sprayed it and it goes out of bounds. So what do you do if you're the Ds here, Chris? The, the pressure's it hasn't been past centre, really. Yeah, they've just I reckon they've just got to lock on here and just play some real dirty footy for a minute and just make sure they lock it in. Look after the footy and just try and get it out of there for a bit and give their backs a bit of a rest. Possession, you reckon, as this one comes out now. Salzberger, he gets caught with the footy and the umpire's called him for a throw. Well, we'll take a look at that one on the replay. There's a nice tackle down there to Jack Maundrell. Got his hands free. Oh, tough oh, one. Fair, fair call, I reckon. Yep. Yeah, good tackle. Good forward pressure from the, from the Clarence, once, uh, from Clarence once again. So Jackie Maundrell... He will go back from about 25 metres out. His kick isn't the greatest. Just hit the front of his shoe. Plenty of numbers here for Clarence. As that one goes around the corner, it was Ethan Williamson, the hero from a couple of weeks ago that kicked four goals, but it missed the big sticks and goes through for a behind. So the Ds just need to hold onto the footy here according to Chris Ransom as that one comes out nicely, finds a man in Salzburger. Salzburger's kick goes long and deep. At the back of the pack is Setchel. His handball was clever. Now they run it through the ruse. That kick is pretty good, finding Noonan, who goes deep inside forward 50 yet again. Over the back, here's a chance for the ruse if they can get it. That's a clever touch by the foot. Out by Boxall now. Boxall's kick comes out to centre wing. Leading the race down there was the ruse as Setchell dives in, Burrows in. As a Setchell knows, only a Setchell knows how to do that, Burrow in, and we will see a ball up. Yeah, really good from the North Hobart defence there, holding up, attacking the footy. M much better than, much better start. Noonan got his one away, out it comes for Creswell again. Kicked off the ground. It was clever there by Fox, but it's coming straight back. Now it's a foot race. First man out there is going to be Hurd. Heard with a nice clean pick up and beautiful left foot kick down the throat of Leeson, but he missed the mark, unfortunately. Hasty got his ball up towards Caswell, but this one's coming back. Oh, attack on the footy was good down there by Smith. Smith goes again, got a handball away, good attack on the footy, and Fletcher Richards sees it out for the Roos. Yeah, North Hobart seemed to have lift their intensity around the ball a bit, just not being second to the footy anymore. How about this pick up? Bang. And watch this left foot. Oh, no, we missed it. That's all right. It was a ripper left foot kick, as we see go back live. Punch down again. Gee, Darcy Noonan's winning a lot of footy through the middle. Handy stuff down there by, by McLeod. Quick kick forward by the Ds. Can they get it inside forward 50? Good pressure again by the defence in Hurd, but it's chopped off by the stack hat Hills. Hills goes long for the first time inside forward 50. Now it's a two-on-one in favour of the... Ruse, clever stuff down there by Sullivan. Sullivan gets his kick off. Chance now for the D's if he can pick it up cleanly and thread it through. Now that one goes across the face of goal for a behind. Looking dangerous though down there, North Hobart. Really good effort there by uh, Sullivan just to keep keep the ball in and eventually win the footy in that two-on-one. Baumforth was the man who kicked it, unfortunately, across the face of goal. Now, 
It's a bit too easy for the Roos as they bring it out from this far pocket. Pace shown how far has he run. He's called too far now, unfortunately for Harvey Hurd. That one, he's ran out from full back to basically uh, the North Hobart eating strip. <laughs> he's, he's been caught too far. So a free kick going to Bounforth. That's a good kick, and that's a brilliant kick. Poor checking in defence by the Roos, and the mark's been taken down there by Sawford. Yeah, really good hit up at the footy. No, no one from Clarence went with him, expecting the long kick, and he just hit up, nice little, di nice little chip over the top. So, Sawford, not a real angle. That's a great kick for goal, and he sends it home. The exact response that the Demons needed and something to give them a bit of energy there, Chris. Yeah, get them up and about. Really, really lovely kick on goal. Not much angle to speak of and just put it straight through the big sticks. Not much movement from the goal umpire at all. Pretty tough kick. It is freezing cold out there today. Yeah, it's not very warm. Tough kick in a grand final. Maybe a slight breeze going to the mountain side of North Hobart Oval or the Horry Gorringe end, if you like. But scores are level. Eight minutes 55 gone in the first term on the Jackson Motor Company scoreboard. STJFL under 13's grand final here back in the middle. Nice punch down by the D's. Quick handball out. Found the stack out in heels. Now they're running through. It's McLeod who sends it deep inside forward 50. Here's a chance over the back. The man at the bottom of the pack is Jones. He just needs to get it off the ground as he left it behind though. Nice tackle. Here's a chance again for Sawford. They dive on it here. Hoping to keep it in the forward 50. Quick kick around the corner nicely by Smith, goes across towards the near side and Al calls a behind. Yeah, you can just see what that goal's done for their confidence in the midfield there. That's the first clearance they've won, I reckon, North Hobart, so up and about now. Heard to bring the ball out again. This time he doesn't run as far. That's a good kick out towards Darcy Noonan. Clever touch there by him. He hits it off the ground. Who's going to be first to the footy? It was the Ruse who arrive in packs. Now the handball comes up. That's a good tackle. Umpire calls play on. There he is again. Heels in the stack hat. It was uh, Noonan with a quick tackle. Handballed out by the D's. Over the footy nicely there was Creswell. Now a chance again for Hills. He gets tapped off by his own uh, uh, teammate. Gapen now sends the ball forward. And a strong mark down there taken by Whiten. Whiten quickly moves the ball on. No free kick given away there. First person of the footy is going to be Cracknell. But the pace shown by Gapen's good. Cracknell keeps running. Nice shepherd again there by Salzberger. Good shepherd again by Salzberger. This is great work by the D's as they get the ball forward again. Down there again is Hurd, who's defending beautifully all game. Harper handballs off to a running teammate, and that kick is high up and under, but a strong mark taken by Caswell. Yeah, very good from Kaz. Just slowing, slowing it down there, making sure he's got an uh, option here to kick to. Caswell's kick isn't great off the boot, but it's going to work okay. There's a man over the back if the D's can get it there. Quick kick will go in towards goal. Chance now down there for Balmforth as his kick goes across to the near side. You've got to make the most of the opportunities you do. There. They've had a few opportunities here now, North Hobart. They're getting more footy inside 50. They're starting to play a bit more team brand of footy and just getting it in there. It's confidence, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's confidence. So they're up and about now, the Ds. Just got to make sure they capitalise on those forward 50 entries. So now the ball to be moved out. Going the opposite way now, the Roos. Great defensive pressure again as that kick goes long. Maybe a free kick. It will be a free kick going to the captain, Harper. Harper looks to play on, but the umpire says, no, everyone, stop, mate. You better go back and have your kick. So on the far side, Harper looks up. Nothing really, no real movement up forward, or no one's getting really free. So he gets called to play on, and that's 50 metres because... He didn't call play on yet, so Eden Hills with a 50 metre penalty. Plays on quickly. Now there's some movement up forward. Chance over the back here for Cooney. And that one goes out of bounds. Must of course thank the sponsors, Coal River Farm, Tyre Wright, Parmic, Diagrind. And of course, Cripps the Master Baker, baking great bread since 1878. Now the Roos have a chance to get the footy. Quick kick off the ground. Who's playing in front down here? Nice pressure again by the D's defence. 
Handballed over the top. There's a quick kick on goal for Williamson. Good work by Caswell on the non-preferred two, if you don't mind. His kick only goes as far as Maundrell. His kick goes in, but that'll be marked and chopped off by Salzberger. Salzberger's kick out towards his mate in Cracknell. I've got numbers out here. Hills, handballs off nicely to Fox. Fox quickly up the wing, looking for his teammate. Good defensive work by Fletcher Richards at the back of the pack. Now a chance for Ollie Hill. His kick goes out of bounds for a boundary throw-in. Yeah, good, good run here from North Over. They're starting to run a bit, looking, looking a bit more dangerous. Clarence... Clarence is starting to respond to that pressure, but it's just started to become a bit more of an even game, I feel. So a boundary throw in again. Great work by Noonan. His kick was smothered. Connor was there. Through was Salzberger. He got his handball up, found Cracknell. Cracknell ran into a bit of trouble, and the ruse pressure just wins out. Quick kick forward. I think that was Creswell out towards Johnston. They got in the numbers here, the ruse. Johnston again, his quick kick forward, but that'll be chopped off nicely by Boxel. So Boxel from the back pocket. Doesn't want to slow it down at all. And that one's out of bounds on the full. Yeah, I feel like the not enough footy's been played through this top side of North Hobart here. It's the attacking side of the ground. A lot of footy's over that side. I don't know whether it's employed by any of the teams, but um, yeah, if you're looking to attack, I reckon they need to start getting the ball up on this side of the ground. Good insight for a man who's played a lot of footy at this ground. Boxer's kick finds Creswell. Creswell plays on quickly and finds a man. Oh, gee, it slipped through the fingertips. It is a bit of a so uh, soapy bit of burly out there. And that's a good tackle again. Umpire's called a free kick hold on the footy. So Ali Giles will have a kick from a tough pocket. Yeah, Clarence forward pressure again, just creating, creating a lot of options for them as he's kicked that one across the face and hasn't scored. No, out of bounds on the full. Yeah, just great tackle there. Just stripped him of it, really, yeah. didn't he? Didn't, didn't give him much of a chance to get rid of it. Forward pressure, great tackle. It's about 10 seconds to go in this term, so they'd hate to get a goal against as that one finds McLeod. So Harry McLeod from half back. Sends it long up the wing, and there it is. Siren goes for quarter time here in the STJFL Grand Final between the Clarence Ruse and the North Hobart Demons. Scores 1-1-7 Clarence to North Hobart, 1-3-9. Two points the margin here at quarter time. Goal kickers for the Ruse, Riley Johnson with one and Jude Sawford with one. How did you see that first term, Chris? Yeah, Clarence obviously started better. Had a, had a lot of the footy inside 50, but North Hobart as a quarter went on, gradually got back into it and um, ended up, I reckon, evening out the quarter there. All right, well, we'll take a quick break here at quarter time and be back with the second term of this STJFL Grand Final between Clarence and North Hobart here on Duff TV. Stick around, we'll be right back in just a few moments. Yep, so second quarter about to get underway. We're just waiting for the crowd to leave the field. And the umpire holds up the footy. And second quarter of this SCJFL under-13s boys grand final underway. Out it comes, quick tap out. The first one won by North Hobart. It goes straight down the throat of a Clarence player. And that's a strong mark at centre-half forward by Noonan, who plays on quickly through the fingertips of Cooney. Diving on the footy down there was Lockie Fox. Out it comes again for the Ruse. That's a good tackle again. Out it comes now for Noonan, who's quick. Across the face of goal, though. Through from behind. Great work out. Yeah, good start by the Ruse here again. Just winning that first centre clearance. You feel like whoever wins that centre clearance is going to have the ball trapped in their 50 for a bit. Good mark down there to McLeod. The Beakley medalist for 2019 for this age group. His kick is a beauty. Goes long and deep to the George Miller stand almost. Running through hard there was Reynolds. Reynolds goes again. Tackled hard there the ruse. Hand over the footy there was Gapen. Out it comes now. There's numbers here with the ruse. Quick handball out. Finds uh, Gapen. Noonan. McLeod. McLeod gets tackled by Noonan. And you imagine that those two will have a rivalry going through their age groups there, yeah, Chris. Yes, those two will be all the way through, I reckon, into the state stuff and senior stuff in the next couple of years. So it'll be very interesting to watch those guys develop over the next few years of their football careers. Quick kick forward by the Ruse. Did well down there. I think that might have been the little fella in 
Hadfield. Hadfield yeah. yep. And it comes Salzburg. It runs into a huge Maundrell wall. And he copped him a little bit high there, Maundrell. That was called by the non-controlling umpire. Yeah, just a little bit high there. So Salzburger goes out wide or just slip through the fingertips and over the boundary for a B boundary throwing. Yeah, low. very, very hard at the footy, those two there, though. Really good contest to watch. Great stuff as we see this boundary throwing from the boundary side. Nice high throw in. McLeod wins it out, got his hands free, then just manages to get a kick away somehow. Here's a chance now for Avery. He can't quite get a hold of it, and now it's wrapped up, and the umpire will ball it up. So the ground in a little bit of a rough condition after so many games of footy have been played here at North Hobart. Of course, we've got three more grand finals this afternoon to be played. Now a chance for Hills. Keeps it moving forward. Good stuff by Coomba. Out the back, though, Setchell does what he does best and defends and kicks it out towards Cooney. Cooney just taps it on towards Gapen. Gapen now with pace. Decides against having a bounce and just sends it forward. Big flight down there by Hasty. Missed the footy, though. Now the kick comes out. Fox will be first on the scene, and he's happy to kick it out. Cooney says, well, where else was he going? Yeah, very, very lucky there. I thought, I thought uh, going off what the umpires have done so far this year, I thought it might be a uh, half chance to get called deliberate. Uh, no, I reckon that's fair if you're in the contest like that. He's just trying to kick to himself. McLeod tries to win it out of the ruck. Quick kick off the ground by the Ruse, goes forward again. Great roving at the bottom of the pack. Here's a chance for Noonan. Noonan gets it forward through the fingertips of his teammate down there in Brown, but a quick kick off the ground by Williamson. Let's wait for umpire Al. Goal! Yeah. Ethan Williamson gets his first, and the margin out to five points. Yeah, once again, just over the back, playing playing fast, free-flowing footy, Clarence, and just getting over the back again. Very hard to stop with those far, with those fleet-footed uh, forwards they've got down there. Just really, really good footy. Well, opportunistic stuff, and they're making the most of their opportunities, Clarence. They are 2-2-14 leading North Hobart 139 4 minutes gone in this first term a second term uh, on the Jackson Motor Company scoreboard Ruck contest back in the middle I like the movement of McLeod into the ruck that is clever as it comes down now quick tackle by McLeod on Whiten who got his kick forward Noonan trying hard a little bit too high there on Creswell so he'll cop a free kick here at half forward he looks up nothing doing so he decides to kick it towards where he thought his teammates were going to be, but it got affected by the smother. Great effort down there by Caswell as that kick comes in forward. Man in front, play on. Umpires call the mark. So Ethan Williamson will take the mark. He's got a man inside, and he goes in that direction, finds Noonan. Yeah. Very, very unselfish footy there from Clarence, just chipping it around, trying to find the right option and giving to people in better positions. Um, once again, though, sending clearances, proving pivotal. And this man is very dangerous when he gets near the footy, Darcy Noonan, as that one unfortunately goes to the far side and through for a behind. So North Hobart to bring it out from full back. It's a clever kick. Unfortunately through the finger, or fortunately through the fingertips. Caswell handballs off to a man running. I think that might be Boxall that got it forward. Now shrugging the tackle with Sawford. He's got a man running down beside him, Cracknell, who goes long inside forward 50. No one at home, though. It'll be a foot race. Ward wins the race. Out towards a teammate in Gapen. Gapen gets tackled by Hills. Good tackle by Salzberger, unfortunately, on Noonan, but Noonan kept his feet. Salzberger's down behind play. Because it's a bit scrappy on the far wing there. Umpire needs to take control here. It's a boundary throw in. Good tackle. Great tackle on Lee Song. And he's pulled out a free kick. I'm not sure what that one was for. No, I missed the umpire's signal. He doesn't. Maybe in the back, possibly. Yeah, push in the back. So that's what we've seen on the replay. The kick goes forward. Seen a wing. McLeod got his hands free. Maybe cop the push in the back. How about that one, umpire? And um, umpire says nothing. 
Now through the middle, got his handball away. Here's a chance now for Cracknell. Cracknell's been tackled, but there's a free kick back, maybe for a push in the back. Holding the man, I think that Holding one was. Holding the man, right. Yeah, yeah well picked up after, there, Chris. After that's he what we got of it. That's what we got you here for, mate. Nice high one kicked by Fox. And a strong mark taken by the North Hobart Demons player. That one goes inside forward 50 and an easy mark. He's looking for a handball. Not, not comfortable here, Ollie Jones. He's looking for a handball. Have a shot, mate. Be a hero. So Jones pops it up, knew he didn't have the distance. Oh, almost a push in the back there. Umpire in the wrong spot to see that one. Now the quick handball out. Here's a chance for Cracknell around the corner. Which way does it bounce? It bounces through. Cracknell gets his first, and the scores are level again. Yeah, lovely, lovely kick from Cracknell there on the non-preferred foot. Just a quick hands out of the pack, and a lovely little quick kick on his left foot. Well, Ollie Jones knew he didn't have the journey into him. He sent it up to the top of the square, almost a mark to Bomforth. Almost a great mark, but then he great follow-up work with the quick hands out there to Cracknell and just a nice little snap around the corner. Yeah, brilliant kick, as you say, on the non-preferred and through for a goal. So now we're back in the middle. Scores are level. Eight minutes gone in the second term here in this STJFL Under-13s Grand Final, streaming across the world on Duff TV. Big punch by McLeod. Rolling out the back. Cracknell's going to get it again. His tap just didn't get enough uh, pepper on it, but it found the opponent of the Ruse player. Gaping through with strength. Handballed over the top towards Noonan. Hard at the footy. Nice attack on it by Lee Song. Quick kick forward by the Ruse, but it's going to be chopped off and nicely marked by Hasty. Yeah, very great mark there, just dropping back in front. Read the footy well in the air. Salzberger takes the mark, plays on quickly. His kick is high. Coming out to meet it. I couldn't quite get that fingertips on the footy. Salzberger followed up and looked for the handball to Cracknell. Cracknell goes back towards Smith. Smith got his handball up. Now trying over the footy is Clovia. Out it comes now. Quick tackle again. Cracknell hard over the footy. Got his handballs away. Clovia just lost his feet. Salzberger holding on. Knows where the umpire is. That's clever stuff. Hard at the footy. McLeod. Now Hill's got his hands free, handballed over the top. A chance here if they can get it moving. Great attack on the footy by the Ruse, handballed up nicely. And the umpire's pulled out a free kick. It'll go to McLeod. McLeod moves the ball on quickly. That's good vision again. Finds a teammate down there in Sawford. Sawford goes forward again and, oh, oh, courageous stuff by Massey. Very gutsy stuff there, dropping back in front. Knew he had to go and he did with conviction there. Very well done. Have another look at this. The kick came in from Sawford. And just courage by Massey. In the meantime, the ball's gone out of bounds on the right street end. I've never done that, Chris. Gone oh, back into a pack. I haven't, I haven't done it too many times either, <laughs> Tubes, so. Uh, Where do you play your footy? What's your position? A uh, bit, of, bit of everywhere, a bit of utility, mate. All yeah, right. Um, just where, wherever, the, wherever I'm needed. McLeod got his hands free. Going hard at the footy, Salzberger again. He just shrugs the tackle, then gets a kick forward. And a strong mark down there to Sullivan. the big 66, Brocky Sullivan. Now, you know a bit about this, boys. He got the journey in him. Oh, I, rec I reckon he's got the journey in him. Um, very Normally a lovely kick of the footy, but we'll see how he goes. Brock Sullivan kicks long and just to the, his near side. Through for a behind. So North Hobart in front. Ten and a half minutes gone on the Jackson Mon Motor Company scoreboard. Yeah, g g distance was no worry there, just a bit off bit off target. It's a nice side, side profile of one of the boys down there on the bench. <laughs> Have a look at that. There he is. Not sure who it is. It's one of the boys from the Ds. As it comes out now, big punch away by Clovia. And a nice tackle again. Umpire in the right spot there, just saw him get his hands free. Quick tackle again, and it's just dribbled forward. Here's a chance now for the Ds. Quick kick forward by Hadfield. Salzberger with a deft touch. Kept running. Got his hands again. Here's a quick kick on goal. Salzberger from nowhere. What a ripper. Wow. Just 
great, great follow-up work there from Salzburger. Just effort after effort after effort. And that is exactly what I was going to say. Just his constant effort. Never gave up on the footy. And we'll have a look at this on the Mood Food replay. Kept playing on. And then how about the kick? That's a, that's a great wow. finish. That is a great finish. Brilliant finish. It's just been called a goal here. We could have taken it down and had the um, the big arc, you know, the replay system, and could have shown them quite easily that it was a goal. But North Hobart in front by seven points. Yeah, it looks like they've put Salzburg into the midfield, moved him from centre-half back into the midfield this quarter, and it uh, looks like it's paying a bit of dividends. He's been around the footy a lot. A Brad Hasty move. So now back in the middle. 12 minutes gone, seven points of margin in favour of the Ds. We're in for a great contest here. Big punch by McLeod. His footy goes down. A quick tap over the top by Cracknell. Now a chance again. Cracknell followed up, got the handball away. He's hard at the footy down there is Lee Song, who's playing a great game of footy. Out it comes now. Handballed over the top by Cooney. Finds his man Gapen. Gapen through the middle of the ground. That one's just a little bit too heavy for Whiten. Whiten goes back and gets it though. As this one stays here, Salzburger, McLeod, they can raffle it. Handball came out for Cracknell. Now he's got time through the middle of the ground. His kick goes a little bit too untoward. Now he goes back and gets it again. North Hobart attacking beautifully. Big punch from behind, rolling over the back. Attack on the footy was good there by Taj Brown. And out it comes now for the Ruse. They've got numbers around the footy. Should be able to clear it. Lee Song couldn't get it away. Quick tap by Moore. Now a chance for the big number 66, Sullivan, as this one goes high and it's marked. Yeah. Great stuff, Will Butler. Just continually surging the ball forward, getting it out into space, North Hobart. They look like they're starting to get a bit of a run on, a bit of confidence with their footy, which is really good to see. Will Butler, smart, just moves his way into the middle of the ground here. It's very close to the man on the mark. It's not going to make the journey. Who's down there for the Ds? Is this one kicked oh. off the ground? Goal! Brilliant stuff by the Demons! Wow, wait. Henry Balmforth off the ground. That was some soccer-type stuff from the Ds. I thought I was thought I was watching the uh, Socceroos out there. Just a nice, wow. cro nice cross into the box just to finish. How did this stay in? Goodness me. Who was the man? Who was it down there that kicked it off the ground? That's Little Jones, I think. Brilliant stuff, Balfour. He's got his first. Let's take another look at this. Brilliant. Just over the back there, just a nice little cross into the box and nice little tap in finish. Wow, oh, wee. How about the finish? By Henry Balfour. Wow. Be, that'd be on every uh, soccer replay for about three weeks, I reckon. Quick kick forward by the Ruse. They want to attack Hills that slipped to his fingertips. He's got the job on one of the big forwards for the Ruse, and the, the Ruse are looking for free kicks down there. Owen Setchell. McLeod against Noonan. Punched away by Caswell. He kept running. Noonan did well. They dive on the footy. This one comes out, Noonan trying hard, got his kick away. McLeod just got his kick just, and it's called holding the footy maybe. Yep, so Noonan plays on quickly. That's a high up and under. It's gone to no one in particular. Great work by the Ds. Quick kick away. And it's siren time here, half time at North Hobart Oval. North Hobart 4-4-28, lead Clarence 2-3-15 on the Jackson Motor Company scoreboard. Goal scorers for the Ds, Jude Sawford, Nathaniel Salzberger with an absolute ripper in that term. Henry Bomforth with one that some, well... Tim Cahill would have been proud he of. He would have been, wouldn't he? And Angus Cracknell with one. For the Ruse, it is Ethan Williamson and Riley Johnson with one apiece, half time and... Tell you what, Chris, we've got a game on our hands. We definitely do. Uh, very well done by the Ds there. Just set, started a bit slowly again in that quarter, but came over the top, and that's sort of the second half of that second quarter there. Yeah, I think the move of, uh, as you said, Salzburger into the middle and Harris, Harry McLeod running through the ruck as well, he's starting to win some contests. You could see that uh, Coach Gapen put... Um, Darcy Noonan back into the middle there and started to win a few more contests so they'll be happy with half time I reckon down there at Clarence but it is half time here the margin is 13 points in favour of the D's STJFL under 13's grand final here on Duff TV second half coming up next stick around here on Duff TV 
Yeah, just um, for my boundary reporter, just got a text, in, just got a uh, message in <laughs> saying that um, just need to slow down when they get the ball inside 50 and make sure they nail those shots on goal, which is something we talked about earlier. Just taking the taking the heat out of the is game and making sure they're uh, getting the so, converting those shots. So your boundary rider, mate. Who, who we got? You got some special inside access to the North Hobart uh, rooms, have you? Yeah. yeah um, North Hobart Junior Football Club life member Jim Ransom just uh, down there. <laughs> Big Jim. Down there helping us out. So. so, third term about to get underway here in this STJFL Grand Final between Clarence and North Hobart. 13 points separates these two sides in favour of the D's. Out it comes now. The Roos want to get a goal pretty quick smart just to get their confidence up as that one's thrown away. And copping one fair in the schnoz there. That might have been Clovia. <laughs> he copped a little falcon. As that one goes wider still. Now a race, here they come. Salzburg is going to get there first. He's clever, just keeps it in front, then happy to see it across the line for a boundary throw-in. So time and space is what you're saying down forward. Yeah, just making sure that they're kicking those goals and really keeping the, really keeping the heat on. Thanks to our sponsors from the Clarence Footy Club, Coal River Farm, Parmic, Tyrite and Dyer Grind for all your grinding needs. As that one comes forward for the Roos, punched away nicely. Now a chance here for Fox, who kicks it around the corner, bouncing ball out on the full. So a free kick going... I think Blakey Harper will take it, the captain, will take it upon himself to kick it from half back. Nice long kick. Only man down there that really wanted it was this man. It's Lee Song, I think, as that kick goes forward. Oh, roving beautifully was Mandrill. That might have actually been Johnson. But the handball got picked up by the D's player, Boxall, whose kick was uh, smothered. Handball came out again. Here's a chance for Hills. Maybe tackle without it. Umpire says no. Hills got his kick away. Now a chance for Salzberger. Look at him go. The fast runner sends it long up forward. Coming out to meet it. Sullivan couldn't quite take the mark. He'll go back and get it again. Quickly tit touched off the ground there by Reynolds. Now Salzberger played on as the umpire's called a trip. No, he's just pulling his socks up. I beg your pardon. It's a boundary throw in. Good pace on Salzberger there around the outside. Just follow-up efforts again, just continuing on his form from the second quarter. How good a name is Salzberger, by the way. I wish my name was Tube Salzberger as the boundary throwing comes in. Punched away by McLeod. It comes out for the ruse. Punched forward. Just worked under the footy nicely was the ruse player. Quick kick forward again. Just dribbles it forward. Setchell now got the kick off the ground. That'll be a free kick against. It'll go to Setchell for kicking in danger against Caswell. Sends it long. Man under the footy. Nice mark. Hasty. Hasty's got some space and some runners on the near side. So he goes in that direction towards McLeod, who goes up high. Punched away nicely there by... I think that's Maundrell. It is. Somehow it comes out. Salzburg is trying hard. Handball came out nicely. McLeod got his kick forward to space. Now it's a foot race. Who's going to get there first? Good Shepherd almost laid by Sullivan. Sullivan ran over the footy. The handball came out by Fox. Sullivan trying hard, and that one goes over the line. Boundary throwing. Yeah, good footy by North Hobart here. Just trying to maintain that pressure, but Clarence with, withstanding well. So a boundary throwing at a very similar spot to what we've seen it happening. McLeod with it out of the ruck. Got his kick just. Umpire's caught holding the footy. I'm not sure how that's holding the footy if he gets his foot to the footy. But anyway, a free kick all the same. Interesting decision. Good tackle, though. Great tackle. As it comes forward now, punched away. Man at the bottom of the pack is Gapen, who handballs off to Noonan. Noonan, his kick just dribbled forward, found Williamson. Williamson now with a quick kick forward again. This one's going to land in the arms of Richards. Uh, Johnson, I beg your pardon. As that one goes forward by Hasty. Clearing the area. Bouncing ball. They've got, they could raffle this. They decide to see it across the line. Couldn't quite get a hold of it. And if you're just tuning in, this is uh, the 2019 uh, grand final, not uh, 2005 Clarence Senior Men's. Um, just Noonan to Gapen to Williamson <laughs> down there. So. <laughs> good, good input there, <laughs> Ransom. Uh, that is Chris Ransom from the North Hobart Footy Oval. Just speaking of some of the players that he used to watch in 2005. Is that D's? Uh, in front by nine to, uh, 13 points as this one comes forward. Now a chance, handballed over the top. Here's one for Ransom. Ransom back to Caswell. Caswell with a good handball and kick 
That one goes long, punched away. Good effort down there by Hurd, who clears the ball momentarily in towards his forward area, but it's marked by the Ds and will come back. Boxel there going long out towards Reynolds, who drops the footy. Uh, McLeod there over the footy. Looks like we locked in for a ball up. Yep. Well called there, Chris, as this one is right in the centre of the hallowed turf of North Hobart Oval in the STJFL under-13s grand final between Clarence and the North Hobart Demons. Who's going to get there first? It'll be Cooney, who's another 2005 name, out towards Creswell. Creswell gets his kick forward. Clever touch. Johnston did well. Touch again by Creswell, just shrugged the tackle, got his handball away, comes back in towards the middle. It's picked up there by Boxel, who got his uh, handball just away. And over the footy is Fox. Here he is again, Cracknell. And over the line for another boundary throw. And I think they'll be pretty happy with this, North Hobart. No real scores here, but they've been managed, managed to... Uh, to just lock it up a bit. Yeah, take some time off the clock. They've been really good. Pressure from both teams, though. Tackle pressure's lifted a bit. Premiership quarter. They're both trying to win it here. Handball came out by the Ds. Now they run the ball forward. First man there's going to be Whiten, who couldn't quite get his hands on the footy. Now a chance for Salzberger. Handballed off. Trying to tackle beautifully. Just over the footy. Need to get the handball out. That's a little bit too high. Cody Whiten with the tackle. It'll be a free kick going to Sawford. So Sawford looks to put his charges deep inside forward 50, going back with a flight. McLeod, strong grab. <laughs> Sullivan's claiming it though. Don't, don't think so, Sullivan. I think it's McLeod <laughs> coming back there. Sully just trying his hardest to take one off. Big Harry McLeod. And the man with the frizzy hair will go back from about. Ooh, 35 metres it'll end up kicking from. Has he got the journey in him? Uh, he's been kicking the ball pretty well today, but goal kicking's a whole di completely different thing normally. In he comes. That one looks pretty straight. It goes through the middle. McLeod gets his first goal of the game and extends that margin out to 19 points. Yeah, just great grab, great finish. The D's once again, though, moving the footy, getting it out into space. Absolutely uh, just playing some good footy. Here it is again wasn't the prettiest kick off the boot but it went through the middle and that's all that matters very f almost a flat punt and seven minutes gone North Hobart 5-4 34 lead Clarence 2-3-15 on the Jackson Motor Company scoreboard back in the middle ruck contest one down by McLeod McLeod just run on again tapped it towards Cracknell Cracknell now with space and time gets the ball forward again going back with the flight good mark of Jakey Smith and he's a little too far out to score I think again the D's just looking beautiful as they attack the footy and the pressure's been relentless from these demon side he looks pretty confident here Smith not going to get there and a one handed mark oh. play on Sullivan round the corner quick kick which way does this go oh mark in the square and it's your man, I think, Henry Bamforth. It's a man. It's a man we got. Oh no, it's not at all. It's Walter Aitken. It's a man we got a beautiful side profile of before. <laughs> it is Big Wally. Walter Aitken from directly in front sends it home. So two goals in this term, and there he is. We saw his side profile earlier, and now we've got a full feature face. Great goal. A good effort by Sullivan, just to back it up. He slipped as he kicked it, and Lux of Fortune lands it. Great stuff. Yeah, just keeping their eye on the footy, watching the ball all the time, and re always ready to go. North Hobart at the minute, so Clarence got Clarence is setting a real challenge for Clarence here. Let's see how they respond. 25 points the margin there on the Jackson Motor Company scoreboard. Nine minutes gone in the Premiership quarter for 2019. Noonan wins it down. Salzberger with pace. Look at him go. He runs like a gazelle. Sends it down towards the Sullivan direction. Great defensive work by the Ruse. They need to clear it. Sullivan goes hard again. Hands and feet all in there and will ball it up, says the umpire. Centre clearances again, just proving pivotal. It's been pivotal all quarter. All game, sorry. 
ruck contest. One down nicely, spinning around the corner. That one went four by Smith, just through for a behind. So now the Roos have possession. They need to hold it here. They bring it out to the commentary side. Nice long kick. Almost a mark taken down there by Creswell. He goes hard again. McLeod stands in his way. He's got three or four to beat. His handball comes back. Quick kick again. Dribbles forward. Who's down there for North Hobart? No one. Noonan has it at half back. Sends it long. Going back with the flight. The Demons players can't quite get their hands on the footy. Chance for Gapen. Fox was hard. Out it comes now. Nice work by Caswell. Through Salzberger. Gets his handball away. Clever touch. He runs on again here. Can't get a hold of it. Good defensive work by Fletcher Richards. Hard at the footy now by Cooney. Cooney just pops it up. Out in front of his teammate there in Whiten. Whiten, I beg your pardon. It's Fletcher Richards who's going to run onto this one. He's got too hot on his hammer. The handball comes up nicely. Lee Song now with a quick kick. Got his handball away. Umpire caught him for a throw. Great pressure from the D's defence, and Hills tries to play on. Sorry, Eden, you've got to come back with it, buddy. Yeah, again, great pressure. Just boys putting their heads over the footy, and then great tackling pressure as well from both sides. Hills, his kick was a scrubber, but it's landed in the arms of a opponent. Hard at the footy, that was good stuff by Hasty. Now the kick comes forward again. Great defensive work by the Dees. He's got three to beat here. Can't quite. Quick kick off the ground. Nothing doing. Umpire says, better give it to me, I reckon. Play on. Gee, he let that go forever. Smith got his kick away. I was just waiting for him to blow the whistle there, Chris. Yes, so was I. Now a chance here. Handball came out. Cracknell has time. Just taps it forward. Clever stuff here by the young man. Diving on the footy. Desperate stuff by Cody Whiten. McLeod. Salzberger. Back towards your man, Clovia. Clovia has a man down here by himself. It's Sullivan. Sullivan can be the hero here as he sends it long and sends it home. What a goal! Sullivan with an absolute beauty from a tough pocket to kick it. Gee... Great goal from the scoreboard pocket. Very hard to kick goals from that pocket. And once again, North Hobart just moving it forward, using the hands out the back and getting it forward. How about this kick? How does Sullivan get so free like that? I understand the desperate stuff from the defenders down there for the ruse, but what a goal. <laughs> Great goal. Just backed his I reckon just backed his teammates in to win the footy at the contest, and his man went in and left him out the back. Unbelievable stuff there by the Ds. They now have a margin of 32 points, punched away by Noonan. Out it comes, quick kick away again. Hadfield. I think that might have been, bigger pardon? Hadfield. Hadfield, he's played well down there. Cracknell keeps his feet, happy to see it across the line. Yeah, North Hobart just look, looking once again like they're just, got that bit of confidence now. The kick to few, they're starting to play good footy, playing in front, getting to the ball first. So a boundary throw in, there's three minutes to go approximately in this term. Or 220 if you like. Boundary throw in. Hard at the foot. He's tried hard all day there. The captain, Creswell. I'll call him the captain. He's not the captain. McLeod. Cop one high. He's going to get a free kick here. So McLeod sends it low. He's got numbers out here everywhere. Finds Clothier. Short to Salzberger. Salzberger looks around. They're everywhere here, the Ds. Short one. Not quite. Clever touch. Hard at the footy. That was good by Smith. Smith got it forward. Now a chance for Reynolds over the top. Bouncing ball. This one will go out of bounds. Look at Sullivan just sniffing about. He's looking lively, isn't he, down there? A lot of the, lot of the North Hobart forwards at the minute are looking lively. They've got their confidence up. There's a few of them kicked a few goals already, so they're just looking for that next sniff at the footy. So, ruck contest. One down over the back. Cracknell. Handball's off. Got it back. Cracknell has a chance here. Can't quite get a hold of it. Doesn't give up, though. Follows up nicely there. Crackers. He goes back. Shrugs one. Handball's into the middle. He's got a chance here. And a great tackle laid by Lee Song. Brilliant tackle. Goal-saving tackle by Charlie Leesong. His kick comes out wide. Bouncing ball. Here's a chance for the Ds. A bit of candy sale. Got his handball away. Maundrill. That might actually be Johnson. I beg your pardon. It is Johnson. 
but it was a good tackle again by the Roos. Kicking the ball in was Giles over the top. Can they get one right on the end of three-quarter time here? They need it. Hard at the footy as is. McLeod got his hands free. Then his handball off to Caswell. Now through the middle. As he's got his kick away, just, just in time. Hills clearing momentarily. There's numbers here for the Roos. Great mark. Nice mark by Setchell. Setchell sends his left foot kick out wide towards his good mate in Cooney. Clever stuff by Cooney. Spins around the corner. There's a mark. No, can't quite take the mark. The seconds tick down as this one goes through the middle of the ground. The clock at, hit, at yeah, there it is. The clock stopped. And it is three-quarter time here at North Hobart Oval. North Hobart, 7-5-47. Lead Clarence, 2-3-15 in the STJFL Grand Final for under-13 boys. Goal kickers for the Ds. Cracknell, McLeod, Aitken, Baumfor, Salzburger, Sawford and Sullivan, all with one apiece. Sullivan, an absolute ripper. And in the Clarence boys, it is... Johnston and Williamson with one apiece here. Final quarter coming up. Chris, what do you say if you are coach Matt Gaven? Oh, I just reckon just to the boys, just got to get it on the boot and get it forward, I think. I think they're just playing a, playing a bit, trying to play a bit too pretty. Just get it on the ball forward, back their forwards in to do the job. If their forwards playing in front, that should get them there. All right, we'll take a quick break here. Three-quarter time in the STJFL under-13 boys at grand final between Clarence and North Hobart. It is North Hobart in charge by 32 points with 15 minutes to go. Stick around. The grand final last quarter coming up next here on Duff TV. So final term about to get underway here at North Hobart Oval in the STJFL under 13s boys grand final between Clarence and North Hobart. North Hobart, you'd say they were the underdog before the game. Well, they are 32 points in front. They need six unanswered goals, Clarence, to win this game. And they've got 15 minutes to do it. Ruck contest, one down nicely by Noonan. That's what they needed. Cracknell going back with the flight. Hills, they're playing on and they're playing fast here, the Roos. Nice tackle laid and we'll see a ball up. I went down to the Roos huddle there at three-quarter time and Cat Gapen said to his charges, you must play on at every time. We don't have time to go back off the mark. Play on, kick goals, play on, kick goals. That's what he wants. Yeah, you were at quarter time, three-quarter time down there at the uh, North Hobart huddle? Yeah, Coach Brad Hasty just said, keep doing the little things right. Keep competing, keep tackling, and then the rest will take care of itself. As it comes in forward now for the Roos, quick kick off the ground by the D's player down there was Hadfield, and we will see a ball in. Brad Hasty very happy with um, Hadfield, Ashton Hadfield's last quarter there off half back, just attacking the footy well and playing in front. Boundary throw in. Roos need a goal here. In the arm of Salzburger, handballed into the corridor. Dangerous. Clothier got his kick away. Now it's a foot race. Who's going to get there? McLeod's going to be first for the D's. Handballed off, Mr. Mark. Now he's got a man in the middle, decides against that and goes long. Bouncing ball inside forward 50. Here's a chance now. Handballed over the top. They've got numbers down the back here, the Roos. Uh, the D's, sorry. Quickly tucked on by Coomba. Coomba needs to get off the ground here. Does really well. But great defensive work by Hurd. Plays on. Beautiful stuff by Hurd. Gets his kick. Look at that. A massive Roost deep out into the wing. Punched away, Clothier's going to be first there, and there's a free kick going the way against Setchell. Copped him too high, he's not happy. Hurd's been really good down at full back for them all day, just competing really hard down there for Clarence. Quick kick inside forward 50, it's going to be marked here by the D's. No, it's not. Cracknell through with pace. Have a look at him go. He kicks it long inside forward 50, coming out to meet the footy. Couldn't quite take the mark down there, was Aitken. Now Hurd gets his kick away. McLeod hard at the footy, look at him go. Quickly just dribbles one forward. But Hurd again clears momentarily. Now there's numbers out here. It is, of course, Noonan on that left foot. His kick goes long. Good mark taken down there by Cooney. Cooney into the middle of the ground. Punched away nicely by the Ethan Williamson area in the uh, <laughs> quick kick forward, though, by Noonan. 
is marked by the D's. Got a little tongue tied there, sorry, Chris. And the box will here with the Marco in defence, kicks it forward towards Harper nearly. Cracknell front and centre, he's off again, oh, Cracknell. Look at him go, the little man has a bounce, he's got someone hot on his hammer, that might be downfield. Tackled behind the play against the captain, Harper. And it'll be a free kick down the field to Sullivan. Sullivan's walking away. Not happy, the Clarence faithful. And they've given it to McLeod too. Well. He showed before he had the distance with McLeod, so just got to take his time now and put it through, I reckon. Well, take some time off the clock, that's for sure. So here he goes, big Harry McLeod, the Beakley medalist. Kicks it low. Chance out the back. Scrappy stuff here. Off the ground, no. Umpire has pulled out a free kick. To not low up. Gee. Well, I'm not sure what that was for. Jake Smith's going to get the kick. I think it was the original kick off the ground by a Clarence player. Just in danger. Jake Smith gets his first goal. The first goal of the last term. And could that be... All she wrote, Chris Ransom. It's gonna be very hard for Clarence to come back now. It's uh, it's big. Mar it's got out to a big margin, and um, yeah, they're just gonna have to go at all costs, I think. So, well, we saw that on the replay. I think it was just the Clarence player kicking off the ground originally. Tried to try to get the clearing kick out of the goal square just to relieve a bit of pressure, and just got some fingers on the way through, I think. Well, we missed that one here at Duff TV. I'm not sure what that was for. Anyway, Noonan wins it out of the middle. Hard pressure on Salzberger. So clever. Look at him go. The gazelle handballs off to a running man in McLeod. He's down behind play. McLeod goes long. There's no one in the square. Which way does it bounce? It bounces through. Harry McLeod gets his second. An absolute beauty, but it was the work of Salzberger in the middle there, Chris Ransom. Yeah, that, that move, of, move of Salzberger into the midfield's really paid dividends for North Hobart here. Threw him in there in the second quarter, and he's probably been one of their best, I'd say, for the last three quarters. Well, have a look at this. Luck is a fortune. The man running back down there was Ollie Hill. Couldn't quite meet the footy. Tried hard. And we will see a ball up in the middle. Margin now out to an enormous 44 points. Quick kick forward by the Roos. They need a goal here if there are any chance. That one comes forward. They've got numbers around the footy here, the Roos. They could raffle it. Unfortunately, neither of them come up the footy. Nice tackle, but that's pushing in the back. It'll be a free kick going to Creswell. Creswell plays on quickly, sends a low burner down, and a nice mark slips catch down there to Williamson. He goes back, he's got, he knows he's got no time, so he plays on quickly, and it goes through. Williamson with another goal. Yeah, just sense if they keep playing like that, Clarence, they could be half a chance, but it's just got to keep, got to keep playing on, keep attacking the footy, just keep trying hard all the way through. We'll go back to that tackle and have a look at it on the Mood Food replay. It was a push in the back, a little bit overzealous there, the stack at Eden Hills, who's played a pretty good game, and a nice slips catch there to his opposing 22, Ethan Williamson. <laughs> who, again, smart footy from him to go back quickly yeah. because time is of the essence. And obviously no time on in junior footy, so just got to get it back through, get it back to the middle and go again. Salzberger again with some deft touch. Noonan won the ruck contest. Harper now quickly moves the ball on. There are a chance here. Here goes Creswell. Gets it forward. Chance over the back. They've got numbers here everywhere, the Ruse. Coming through hard at the footy. That was good by Hadfield. He's been tackled and caught holding the footy. Will so, Williamson again. Williamson doesn't have the journey, he doesn't think. He goes in an effort for distance. Just pull, distance pulls the kick to the near side. Yeah. Through for behind. I'm all for going quick, but I think you've got to take your time to make sure you actually put it straight through the middle. Yep. So a long kick. Noonan, Caswell, over the back. Here's a chance. Cracknell just couldn't get his handball away, Clovia. Now a chance for Creswell. Off to his man, Harper. Harper with a long kick inside forward 50. Big, strong mark. Almost paid. No. Umpire says no. Not enough. 
And now the D's look to attack, but it'll stay down there because it's gone out of bounds. So now, right inside 450, punched away by Hills. Pace shown there by Gapen, and got his handball off to Setchell. Setchell with a short one, through the fingertips of the D's player. Now a chance for your man Williamson there, and he's caught holding the footy. No, umpire says I'll ball it up. It was actually Fletcher Richards who's been moved down forward. I like that move. Setchell burrows in, then gets a DDT tackle, and the umpire says I'll take it. Yeah, just locking it in now, North Hobart, defending really hard, trying to take some time off the clock and make sure that Clarence don't kick this, get any more scores. 37 points to the margin. They need seven goals here, the Roos, and they've got seven minutes. seven minutes. So the old Lee Matthews adage, or well, goal a minute, can happen, but they need to happen quickly. Boundary throwing. Nice work. Here's a chance. Quick kick off the ground. Davey. Goal! Lockie Davey gets his first. And Clarence are not done with yet. Chris Ransom. Not by a long stretch. Clarence aren't finished. Um, just good, good, good awareness around the contest. Really quick snap on goal. Just really good from Davey there. Umpires have got two footies out on the ground at the moment. So now we just need to make sure they've got the 666 happening. They've put McLeod back into the ruck up against big man Darcy Noonan. This contest is massive. Well done, McLeod. Got his kick away, a uh, punch away. Out it comes for Cracknell. Cracknell gets stripped of it. Now a chance for Noonan. Noonan runs on with it. He's got Fox coming out. A big pun. It wasn't Fox at all. There's numbers over the top here for the Ruse. As that one comes inside forward 50, Caswell does well. Comes off his man to assist the defenders down there. Caswell goes hard. Got his handball away. Punch now. And across the line, we'll see a boundary throw in. Yeah, great defensive effort there. It was a three on one, I think, in that original contest. And Caswell just kept the ball in front and kept going with it. So boundary thrown right on the forward 50 paint. McLeod up against Noonan. McLeod wins it down. Chance over the back for Jones. Jones got it on. Cracknell ran on with it. Good touch there by Taj Brown. Caswell. Creswell, sorry. Got his kick. Salzberger. Clever. This man's been very good all game, Heard, But Salzburg has been great. His handball came out. Now they've got some numbers here, the Ds. If they can get it up, just picking up there's Connor. Nicely worked. Handball out, Cracknell. Cracknell quickly moves the ball forward. Here's a chance for Sullivan. Couldn't quite get a hold of it. Good effort there by the Ds just to lock it in. First man down there is Sawford. Quick kick around the corner by the Ruse. Numbers here again with the Ruse. Handball came over the top. They work it out. Noonan through the middle of the ground. That's a clever kick. Finds Cooney. Great kick. Cooney now with a bit of space. Plays on quickly. Finds his man down there in Williamson. Williamson's handball goes over the top. McLeod has so much time. He's almost like Pendlebury the way he goes about his footy. That kick goes forward. Now a chance over the back. The scooping handball came out from Ward. Salzberger with a handball through traffic. G clever. Only as far as Harper though. Now this man, Hurd, running the ball out of defensive 50. That's good stuff. Sends a left foot kick long. Now it's into space. Numbers with Clarence here. Good effort. Clarence handball over the top. Giles. Giles trying hard, finding Creswell. Creswell gets tackled as he handballed. Threw hard at the footy. That was good stuff down there by Hadfield. Into the middle of the ground. Noonan. Salzberger hot on his hammer. Got a free kick here, Noonan. But time will go off the clock. They've taken the time off the main scoreboard here at North Hobart Oval. Not sure how long's left. So we don't have the official time clock, of course, here at Duff TV. 11.56 according to the Jackson Motor Company scoreboard. Coming out to meet the footy. Great work there by the Ds in Boxel. Boxel's kick goes long. That one was at the half volley, just trapped by the defensive Ruse player. Now through the middle, quick kick. Just got his foot to it. Coming through the Ruse. They are attacking deftly as they go forward again. Bouncing ball inside forward 50. Trapped here. They'd love to see a ball up. 
They can't quite trap it in. Quickly touched off the ground. Williamson's clever. Hasn't given up. Punched away by Hills. Clearing kick by the Ds. And they've marked here. They should have slowed it down. Oh, oh great, great tackle time. there by Maundrell. Got not rewarded with the free kick. Cracknell now through the middle of the ground. Diving on the footy. There's a free kick going the way of the Ds. Cracknell with a free kick. Yeah, just Hadfield there again, defending very hard down the back. He's been very good for them off half-back, attacking the footy all day. McLeod, smart, slows it down. Has numbers in the middle, decides to go long towards Sullivan. Over the top here, bouncing ball, out the back, running onto it, bound forth. He's got a man to beat down there in Ollie Hill. Ollie Hill does well, charging at the fully. Butler, Butler tackled without it, and it's caught holding the footy. Butler tackled with it, I should say, holding the ball. Yeah, good tackle again. Just tackle pressure between those two sides has been great all day. Just North Hobart withstanding a little bit better so far. Creswell tried to scoop it up. Handball came out. Now a chance for Cracknell. Cracknell with pace. This could be the sealer. He sends it long. He sends a goal. Goal! Brilliant goal to Angus Cracknell. And he has just not given up all day, Chris Ransom. No, he's, he's, been, he's been in and under all day, and now he's just starting to show his class on the outside here, uh, Angus Cracknell. Really good pick up and just put on the afterburners and burn them off, settled and kicked the snag. Just the three quick steps there for Angus Cracknell, and that might be a little too much now for Clarence. They need seven goals to get back in the game, and according to us, there's about a minute to go. Ruck contest, McLeod and Noonan tried hard all day as Darcy Noonan punched away nicely there by Jones. Out the back, here's a chance for Davey. His handball just missed Clovia on the opposing side. McLeod with his hands free, doing really well, got it out to Fox, who goes inside forward 50, bouncing ball out the back. Here's a chance for the Roos to attack again. They're not in it at all. Salzberger, so good. Out towards his mate there in Sawford, who got tackled with a footy, and it's a throw, free kick to the Roos. Can't be long left. Massey. The Roos, just with the numbers, can't get their hands on the footy. Cracknell got his handball out only as far as Brown. Brown's kick up the line, and there it is. The North Hobart Demons are the 2019 Premiers. 10-5-65, North Hobart defeat Clarence, 4-4-28, 37 points the margin. Goal kickers for the Ds, Cracknell and McLeod with two apiece, then singles to Aitken, Baumforth, Salzberger, Sawford, Smith and Sullivan. For the Ruse, it was Williamson with a couple, Davey with one and Johnson with one. What a game of footy. Yeah, it was a great game of footy. Clarence, to their credit, fought hard all day, but just North Hobart's class in the end and tackle pressure was just too much to overcome. It was a, it was set up by the third quarter, really, wasn't it? I, I, I mean, they talk about the cliches of the third quarter being the premiership quarter. It was a seven, a, a sorry, it was a two, a five goal to none third term in favour of the Ds. And a great game of footy, but I think just too many... Uh, contributors across the board from the Roos and maybe not enough boys standing up for Clarence but a great game of footy all the same there Chris who did you see as the, the best players on the ground? Oh, I thought um, for Clarence Darcy Noonan obviously fought really hard in there I think um, his battle with McLeod and the Ruck all day is, um, is obviously one that's good all day but I reckon for the rest of their careers it's going to be one that's oh, yeah. going to be one to watch um, Williamson as well for um, Clarence and I thought the game of um, Maxi Gable was pretty good as well just his run and carry uh, and then for the D's, uh, McLeod, Cracknell, Hadfield, um, Caswell. Yeah, he was very good down back. Uh, Salzburger, obviously, um, Sullivan and uh, Hasty across half back as well were all very good. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I, I think that uh, the one player that you probably missed out there for the Clarence boys was Joshy Creswell. He tried his backside off all day. Blake Harper was very good, the yes, captain yes. in patches as well. 
Um, but you're absolutely right. I, I think it's a flip of the coin for best on ground for mine. Harry McLeod or Nathan Nate uh, Salzberger. I thought his his touch through the middle of the ground, Salzberger moving from centre half back to the middle of the ground. That's a that's a coaching masterpiece there by Brad Hasty. But I tell you what, how good is it going to be watching these boys, these two sides, battle it out for the next four or five decades? <laughs> Yes, they're, uh, they're two right up through the Masters. Two very good teams, and uh, you obviously, as a as a senior player, you look forward to these boys coming through and being able to play with these boys because what they showed out there today was pretty pretty unbelievable. I'm not looking too much to playing against those Clarence boys though. No, no, there's some really, and as you said, Darcy Noonan, he was very very good all day. Just unfortunately, uh, not getting the chocolates in the end. So repeating, it was. North Hobart 10 5 65, defeating Clarence 4 4 28. 37 point winners today, the North Hobart Demons, in a cracking game of footy, the STJ for grand final. Uh, we will cross down to the presentation area for the medallion presentations. My name is Tubes Taylor. I'm thanking you, Chris Ransom, for sticking around, mate, and being a wonderful special comments man. But coming up next on STJFL Grand Final Day is the under-14 boys between Clarence and North Hobart. Surprise, surprise. We'll take, I will take a break. We'll see that game coming up next. Presentations come up here now. Good morning, patrons. What another great game we've had today for the Crips STJFL Under-13 Grand Final. Commiserations to the Clarence boys. You put up a great fight. You've had a tremendous season. Well done to Clarence. <laughs> Obviously, congratulations go to the North Hobart team on being premiers for season 2019. For every game of football that we have, we have to have a team of umpires. And to present the umpire medallions, I'd like to call for Mark Waddington, the coordinator of the umpires. Uh, thank you. Congratulations to both teams for the, uh, the fine exhibition of football today and the way in which the game was played. If I could call upon our umpires and congratulate them on their season and uh, their performance today. Um, our boundary umpires, Ryan McConnon and Doug Matson. Uh, goal umpires, Alistair Downey and Rose Brennan. Uh, field umpires Lachlan Boresboom, Lachlan Nichols, and emergency umpire Matilda Waddington. Once again, thanks to our team of umpires for the exhibition today. We have a new medal that's been initiated this year for the most courageous player in the game. It's the Alex Godomsky Fellowship Medal and today's winner is North Hobart player Angus Cracknell. Well done, Angus. I'd now like to invite Clarence coach Matt Gapin to come forward to say a few words. Thank you, Gibbo. Uh, firstly, to the umpires, thanks again for putting on a great day and to the SG, STG AFL to, uh, for putting on the day also. Uh, 
Congratulations uh, to Brad and Crackers, no doubt. Uh, turning around, uh, 60 point uh, loss in the second semi final to come out and uh, beat us quite convincingly today. And, and to all the North Hobart boys, uh, show some grit to do that and congratulations on a sensational win. Uh, to all the people, I'll thank them a bit later tonight uh, that helped us during the year, but to Setch and Coon and uh, Bink, uh, who helped me out during the year. Um, they do a sensational effort. To our boys, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow, no doubt about that, going through the year unbeaten. Uh, but it's bound to happen sometime, boys, and uh, it's going to be a good lesson to learn. So congratulations on a good year other than that, and uh, well done today. Thank you. Our best player on the ground medal today goes to our Berkeley medalist, Harrison McLeod. I'd now like to invite the North Hobart coaches up to say a few words. It's the thing when your team, uh, your share coach, you sort of got to divide responsibilities. <clears throat> um, my turn to talk. Um, look, thank you to the umpires, first of all, um, the STJFL, the sponsors, um, everyone, like Kat said, I will thank you all hours later. Um, we told our boys that the gap will close. The gap will close with you guys. You've been the yardstick for a, a few years now, um, not losing any games. Um, but we said, work hard, the gap will close. Um, fortunately enough for us, um, that day was today, grand final day, um, and the boys did a tremendous job. We're, um, yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> We told them before the game that we were proud, win, lose or draw, just as long as we left nothing out here. Um, we had no regrets and we just put pressure on 100% for the whole four quarters. And that's exactly what they did. So they, yeah, much deserved win today, boys. Well done. <clears throat> Um, yeah, and just the Clarence boys, a great game. Um, Kat and the boys, you, you just um, prepare them so well. They've got great skills and a great bunch of uh, young fellas. And I'm sure next season we're going to have a couple of really good battles. And um, oh, you never know what could happen. But uh, hopefully in the next few years we, uh, you know, we really um, have a couple of good games together. So uh, thanks again, guys. Thanks, Brad and Matthew. We'd now invite the coach to call out the players to receive their premiership medallion. All right, Jacob Clothier. <coughs> Ollie Jones. <coughs> Nathaniel Salzberger. Oscar O'Donovan. <clears throat> Big bad Brocky boy, happy car. Thomas Kuma. Henry Barnforth. Has a oh, has a McLeod. Has a Caswell. Yeah. 
Um, unfortunately, when we have a team of 26, um, you, we obviously can't play them all. So we've got a couple here today that missed out. Um, and we made special uh, a, a special point to mention them before the game because it's, it's really tough to be a part of a team um, and unfortunately not being able to make it on the day. So Thomas Arnott. Come up here. Maddie Kay. <clears throat> Walter Aiken. <laughs> Lockie Fox. Yeah. I'm, work I'm working my way across. Oh. Jake Smith. <clears throat> Logan Moxall. Ashton Hadfield. Jack Connor. Jude Sawford. Billy Butler. Yeah. Has a McLeod. Yeah. Eden Hills. <laughs> Josh Avery. James Reynolds. Yeah. Angus Cracknell. Yeah. And another unfortunate part of the game are his injuries. And unfortunately for this young fella, about, what, five, six weeks ago, broke his collarbone. So, Nick Keating. And our captain, Charlie Hasty. And our two coaches, Matt Cracknell and Brad Hasty. We'll get Charlie to come back and receive the Premiership Cup along with the coaches. So our 2019 Crips STJFL under 13 Premiers, North Hobart.
Walmart. 